Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a bit a bit. And uh, some of you might notice uh, that, uh, well, uh, yeah, this uh, stream has a slightly different format this time. <laughs> I, someone I can't believe it actually, uh, you know, uh, mentioned that, like, watched the video and was like, hey, I, I can't see the, the stream chat. I'm like, holy shit, someone's actually watched this. Uh, so out of that, I, I messed around with paint and made a PNG tuber. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I should just wait for some people to come in. <laughs> uh, string of bad luck this week, though. Uh, but you know, I, I'm I'm here still, even even if the jaw hurts a lot. All right, all right. Uh, so yeah, gotta fill the dead air as as we wait. Oh yeah, I forget how bad I'm at this. All right. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Hello, Evie, and uh, 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 look, uh, we, I, I have a chat box now, so there's that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I made it using paint, the Microsoft Paint, the greatest, the greatest of all time. I should really re-download Illustrator and like Photoshop at some point. All right, we're probably gonna start in a minute, but I I still just want to give people a second to come in if they want, because yeah, it's people pretty into this actually. Oh yeah, it's it's been two, it's been it's been a bit. All right, let's uh, let's uh, start at the rails. Time time to enter the pig iron manor. Ah, oh, this music's so good. Uh, that era was a rap race of innovation and development. was so thick you could hardly see more than a few feet. She could compare it to a dense morning fog, but that might give this impression of beauty. And there was little that she found in this haze. Do you see the silhouettes of several men in the smoky room? The one in the middle. The one looking in your direction, master. Was the present master of the house. Jacopo! Oh, look, look at this lovely young man! Surely he will not be here. Surely. Oh, I'm a little quiet. Okay, uh, yeah, let me. Uh, I guess I'll put the music a uh, bit down. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I think I should be fine. Maybe. Hey, Mosca. We're we're starting this, and uh, I have a different format, and we have a chat box and and stuff. <laughs> oh, you're not hearing anything. Uh. Uh, Evie. Uh, I I know I'm. Uh, Transmitting off the mic and the desktop audio right now. Uh, that might be on your end, actually, then. Uh, okay, let's... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're v 2 in. Okay, that's sick. So, so. Alright. Uh, audio balancing. Done. Alright. If, uh, if Evie can hear it, it's probably definitely... Uh, an... Okay, okay. Sweet. 
So yeah, here here we have Jacopo, the current uh, the current master of the house. And surely, surely he will not be an asshole, or this won't be tragic, or any of that. Truly, we're we're in for a good time. This this music promises it. His name was Jacopo, and though he dressed in such fine attire, I sincerely doubt he understood how splendid the furnishings left in the mansion truly were. I am a faithful servant of this house, and I would not, for the life of me, dare speak ill of my master. However, this is a time long past. It it said this was an era of innovation. And uh, if, uh, this music definitely gives off a certain vibe. I imagine God would be so kind as to turn a blind eye to a little bit of honesty. I was not terribly fond of my master back then. Ooh, ooh. She she didn't even she didn't even start that for best yet. <laughs> that that bodes well. <laughs> he had wavy hair, the color of overdried tea leaves, a piercing gaze, an arrogant smile. And he wore a hat that made him look rather haughty. Look look at this Byronic hero hero quotation marks. And then he put his trust only in money, renown, and rank. He loved only the iron and steel that have revolutionized so many industries. He had not the slightest bit of love or care for other people. <laughs> the way just be uh, real talk. Uh, I, I just gotta tell you this. Dude sucked. He had not the slightest bit of love or care for other people. At the very least, that's what I believed at the time. Take a look around the room, master. <laughs> Byronic hero, back when people didn't put uh, anti on the front. Oh, <laughs> also, just Lord Byron was kind of, kind of sucked too. Uh, funny story, you, you know Ada Lovelace, uh, who we can thank along with Babbage for all of computing? And they did an amazing amount of work there. The whole reason she got into that and uh, was because her mom uh, made her study a lot of math to try to cure her of the, the influence her her father, who was the poet Lord Byron. And she was like, "You you need this to to stay rational, and not be like an asshole cheater like him." Yeah. So so you we can kind of thank computing toward Lord Byron, kind of sucking super hard. Talking about, uh, talking about, uh, funny, uh, family, like that, like, it's really, it can be really funny, because it's like, hey, Mary, Mary Shelley just, just fucked, fucked some guy on her mother's grave. She also instantly helped a trans man and his wife, uh, escape and get into another country. So, you know, good on her, big hero. She also kept her father's heart on her desk. Or was that her skull? Was that her skull? I don't remember. Which he probably also fought that uh, that boyfriend on on that table. It was the heart. It was the heart. You're right. You're right. Take a look around the room, Master. Jacobo had remodeled into a recreation area. A billiards table sat in the center of the room, and downward facing lights hanging from the ceiling were special made. The lights shone upon the dark green stand like stage. Cigars and bourbon lined glass cases installed in place of bookshelves. The cases were always fully stocked, the contents available to partake of readily. At that particular moment, as he had many times before, Jack Poe invited several friends and acquaintances and they were entertaining themselves. His wealthy, high-ranking acquaintances had a variety of hair colors from polished brass to the brown of a baby robin to the color of sunburnt wheat. There were also a much greater variation in skin tone compared to the visitors and residents of previous eras, but that was hardly any surprise. For the mansion sat upon land inhabited largely by immigrants. The new world. Our mansion has moved to America. What's the matter? What are you looking at? Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. Ain't no one here unless you're seeing a ghost. I don't believe in such nonsense. It's an old house with long history. I wouldn't be surprised if I had a ghost or two. But if the place is going to be haunted, I'd take a princess over a bloody broad any day. A princess, eh? And when she showed up, you'd have your way with this ghostly lady, am I right? Color me impressed, son. 
you jumper bones and she didn't even got any to jump. Come now, that's hardly fair. Not much you can even do with a ghost. Oh my god, are you men or children? This is my house and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Just a blathering a couple of drunks, pretend you didn't hear nothing. For the love of god. Yeah, Vent, whatever happened to the printer you invested in? I haven't even heard the name come up in some time. Ugh, can we please avoid that topic? It's been quite the headache for me. I thought I'd pay it off, but... It always sounded sketchy to me. The three B's, boobs, boobs, and business. <sighs> One of those is significantly more whack than the other three, and that's business. You could have mentioned that before. Oh, yeah. I recommend you pull out of that unless you want to find yourself with nothing but left but a nice five pile of death. You could have mentioned that beforehand. Ugh, this is killing me. The men's deep voices resonate in the cloudy room as they imbibed alcohol and puffed on their cigars. They conversed mostly about business and money. Jack Bone and the rest of the men were a breed known as investors. Investors. The men also called them tacticians or scum of the earth. They survived on information attained before anyone else by making swift decisions and having foresight. <laughs> Though instead of flesh and bone, their soldiers were made of ink and paper. To an outsider, this meeting might appear to a congregation of friends, but in reality, they were observing one another, gathering information and anything else they could use to get ahead. Ah yes, the bloodsuckers. At times, money and information were exchanged directly, and when they were no longer of financial value to one another, their relationship would pop like a bubble and dissipate into nothing. But you know, Jacobo, you, you can't be sure this railroad you're so passionate about is going to bear fruit, neither. You don't even know if it'll get finished, and if they do connect the tracks, will it really be in any shape for people to ride? It's a pipe dream, this transcontinental railroad of yours. Jacobo went silent, but I'm certain this was what going through his head. You're a bunch of damned imbeciles if you can't see that the entire country's put their weight behind this endeavor. This is why you have so much trouble making even a few thousand. At, at that time, a great railroad was being built across the breadth of the continent, built on the back of countless immigrants and their suffering. Construction was spearheaded by two large rail companies in the competition for both prestige and a bigger share of this massive national enterprise. The Union Pacific Railroad Company had started building from the east, and the Central Pacific Railroad Company from the west. But government bonds alone were not enough to finance it, this massive undertaking. By the way, uh, there have been some less than pleasant reports about workers down on the job of the company you chose, Central Pacific. Ah, uh, you mean how they're using explosives to blast through the mountains? Making quite a bang, they are. But if this gets to be much of a bigger fix, uh, they're not going to be able to continue this construction. You should at least put your money in the more short of that it's too Union Pacific. It costs you to hire replacement workers and they keep kicking the bucket. You're going to have trouble finding more. Oh my goodness. I'm here I thought you all had spines. You think we're going to run out of workers just because a few ate it? <laughs> There's so many we don't even know what to do with them all. There's not a chance that well will dry up. And if by some chance it does, all we have to do is scoop up a ship full of blacks or yellows. The the sheer racism. Just just and capitalism just more meat for the grinder. You won't get anywhere if you spend time worrying about a few measly laborers. This is an endeavor backed by the entire nation. Their debts are honorable, in service of their country. Oh wow, we're we're, we're hitting this point too. Uh, it, 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 yeah, so I can't really hide my hatred of this guy, because he fucking sucks. Jacobo sucks so much. Uh. By the way, if if anyone's favorite character is Jacobo, when they talk about Father Morgana, it's... Mm. <laughs> Music is really good. As it always is. The biggest loss is not of people's lives, but of time. <sighs> wow. The longer a project takes, the more money costs, and the less profit we make. 
while we seek his rapid progress, even if the methods obtained are messy or deadly. Even the other bloodsuckers like to hide it. The other man in the room chuckled uncomfortably at Jacko's distasteful choice of words. Do you agree with his way of thinking, Master? Perhaps he does have a point in the great sacrifice is necessary to accomplish great things. And it is true that tragedy often lies in the shadows of splendor of times long past. Furthermore, the way people see the world changes with the time, so I hesitate to criticize him too severely. Now, as I'm sure you've already picked up on, he was an investor who had put his money in a railroad company. <laughs> he also possessed several crude oil refineries riding on the world's second wave of industrial development. The mountain too bustled with life in a way it never had before. Dozens of maids, including me. Gardeners, chefs, sculptors, and artists. At times we even had writers coming in and out of the house. There was rarely a moment of silence. However, I was not terribly fond of the hustle and bustle personally. But please do not get me wrong. I'm hardly opposed to the mansion being cheerful. It was just... How should I put it? The splendor of the time seemed superficial and hopeless. It was as though everyone was being rushed along by some unknown, invisible force. The invisible hands of the... the, the, the market. Part of it was, I expect, caused by the growing divide between those standing at the top and sitting at the bottom. Or perhaps the mansion was simply taking after its master. There's no time to waste. Everything is resting upon the success of this project. Whatever it takes, I will ensure it will happen. I need more money and more power. Suddenly, a restrained knock on the door stopped his train of thought. From beyond the door came a woman's voice, gentle as a soft spring breeze. Pardon me, I, I have made some tea. May I offer anyone a cup? Already, uh, already she's there. When a door opened in, it stood a beautiful woman with pure white hair. It was indeed her. Are you surprised? Or did you anticipate her appearance this time? Though she was not the same age and dressed differently, the white-haired girl whom you saw fall into the hands of misfortune in the era of roses and the era of the beast was also present in this era of innovation. Furthermore, she was Jacobo's wife. Tea? I don't recall asking for that. When were you asked to make it? I, I wasn't, but I had these leaves with the most wonderful aroma and I thought you might enjoy Oh, shut your trap and know your place. What do you think we have all these maids for? Uh, hey, hey, now. No need to trade your lady like that. She was just trying to be cautious. Uh, these are my personal things. Keep your comments to yourself. His friends were unsure how to react, but ultimately nobody stepped up to stop Jack Bo. They merely shrugged and tossed some glances at one another. Jack was stopped over to the white white haired girl. He then grabbed her by the arm and dragged her from the den. What the hell do you think you're doing? I told you time and time again to stay away from that room unless absolutely necessary. I'm I'm sorry, uh, but I made tea and shut up about uh, shut up about the tea already. You think we're having tea parties in there like a bunch of prissy nobles? I'm sorry. If you really feel so bad, don't go in there in the first place. Get the hell back to your room. I'm I meant no harm. I I'm just your wife. I thought it'd be nice if I could do something. Like I've told you, that's not your job. Don't show yourself in front of the other men. I have nothing else to say to you. I got it, now scram. Sakes alive, first time that you, it's driving me up the wall. This guy, he really, really, really sucks. Oh boy, what is it? I told you to get out of here. Right. What? When will you spend time with me next? It's been some time since we last went out together. But we don't even have to go out just having dinner together with you. How many times are you going to make me repeat myself, you worthless tramp? Are those ears only for show? Go back to your goddamn room. My apologies. Looking utterly downtrodden, the white-haired girl made her departure. Such a piteous sight she was. As he watched her go, Jacobo merely snorted. Just thinking about the way he behaved and angers me. I have little fondness of men who do not treat their spouses with respect. So as you can see, the white-haired girl was in hardly a joyous situation. 
She was devoted to Jack Poe and tried to do whatever she could for him, but he not only brushed her aside, but he did so in an insultingly, deliberately hurtful manner. They were far from picturesque partners. Do you wonder then why she married him? The answer to that question will come to light in time. For now, let's uh, follow him. Looking down dejectedly at the undrunken tea, the white-haired girl walked down the corridor, alone. Then the calming scent filled the air. There was nobody around to have their hearts sworn by it. Nor was there anyone to alleviate her loneliness. Despite being the master's wife, the maid who crossed her path in the halls said nary a word to her. As a matter of fact... Oh dear, I beg your pardon, madam. That's uh, fine. One even bumped into her, stifling a laugh as she trotted off. In all likelihood, she had done it intentionally. The poor white-haired girl, who had fallen to the floor, stared helplessly at the broken cups. The tea she had made for her husband was forming a stain in the carpet. The maid's behavior towards the mistress of the house was absolutely unacceptable. Nonetheless, it was commonplace, all because of the way Jack Poe treated her. The more the man in the house acted cool to her, the less weight her position as his wife held to the servants. Day in, day out, the maids worked busily, offered little opportunities for leisure, so they naturally have accumulated quite a bit of stress, and she became the target for them to let off the steam. Not directly, but through a more subdued kind of harassment from the shadows. She might have felt quite miserable. I imagine she would have been better off as one of the maids. On the surface in front of others, they showed respect for her as a Jack was bride, but behind closed doors, they acted very much the opposite. The disparity between the treatment she, she received around the others and the treatment she was supposed to receive at all times and the way she was actually treated made the abuse that much worse. And furthermore, as you've seen through the, the other doors, Master, she was a very reserved young woman. She could neither raise her voice in reprimand nor raise her hand in retaliation. She very, she very much seems like incredibly idealized to the point of like barely feeling like a real person. Particularly in, particularly in the last door. I have to get this cleaned up. She extended her spindly fingers towards the shards of shattered porcelain. Ah, uh, but even then, the broken cup seemed to have no concern to spare for her. Its shattered edge cut her fingertip when she made to pick it up. A trickle of warm red blood ran across her unearthly white skin. As painful as the sight it was, it had sort of a taboo beauty to it. So perfect that I, I am too perfect. That is my only weakness. But yeah, there's there's a certain like religious undercurrent to that where it's like you know self-sacrificing to the point of to the point of it being unhealthy. Like this is what uh, a lot of religious doctrines would have as being good, right? It's it's. Mm. The blood spilling from her fingers showed no sign of slowing down. Yeah, she she ended up uh, like hurt because of that. She clenched her hands into fists, love a sigh, and went back to collecting the shards of porcelain. And that's not to say she wasn't happy in those relationships. Well, this one I I feel like. Eh. And uh, she's crazy. She, she's like, it's absolutely absurd. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, staying with Yukimasa and accepting the fact that, you know, considering everything Yukimasa did. But when she did, uh, Madam, Madam, what's the matter? Oh, Madam, you're bleeding. Well, all the other maids ignored her. One came running over to shouting to the white girl, uh, girl's side. We need to get that cleaned up and bandaged up. Oh, you don't need to pick that up. That's not your job, madam. It's all right, Maria. There's not much to pick up. It's not. It's not all right at all. And the rest of you, why are you just standing there? Your boss's wife is on her hands and knees and you're not even lifting a finger to help her? You disgust me. Uh, Maria, it's, it's fine, really. Oh, madam. If you weren't so timid, this wouldn't happen. You're allowed to yell at them, you know? It's all right, really. I'm. It's my fault. Anyway, just, we should get that finger taken care of. 
Let's get you back to room, okay? Ah, uh, but the broken cups and the spill. As I said, that's the maid's work. Now come on, let's go. Okay. And the rest of you, get this mess cleaned up. She roared like the wind in a thunderstorm. The other maid stood there, dumbfounded, watching as she and the white haired girl disappeared down the hall. But they were soon frowning and grumbling to one another. She thinks she can act all high and mighty just because the master is fond of her. The woman's name was Maria. She was one of the maids. And she was the one person in the mansion the white haired girl could think of as an ally. Though her husband paid her no mind and the maids made her life miserable, just one person, Maria, treated her with respect and kindness. And I'm sure you can readily imagine just how much of a lifesaver that was for her. I too found myself somewhat relieved that Maria was there for her. Being a servant of this house, I was also one of the maids working there at the time. However, I was unable to involve myself to any great degree in her fate. This meant there was little I could do to assist her, even in the times of pain and unpleasantness. The best I could do was to pray that Maria would continue to lend the white-haired girl her hand. And that does it. Thank you, Maria. You're always such a big help. No, oh, no, no need to thank me. I just did what any good man would do. <laughs> no one else is in the room, you know. All oh, right, then I can drop back. Man, I just can't use the talk and all that stuff. I'm out here doing my best, but the headmate's still spouting stuff like, "Oh, your manner of speaking is improper for a servant." Every single time with me. Yeesh, come on, just shove it, would you? You're a damn creep. <laughs> now, you mustn't speak of her like that. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, slip of the tongue. She just kind of gives me the wildies, you know? Speaking of you, uh, drop the stuff you talk to, madam. Kind of awkward if one of us is acting casually, you know? This is normal for me. If I attempt to talk like you, I would freeze up out of nervousness. This is my casual. Ah, uh, fair enough. Guess that what happens when you're raised well. I like it though, it has a very regal feel about it. I don't think my upgrading is the only factor. Ah, uh, but you know, bringing is important. Worth a whole lot more than money, it's. I suppose. Thank you, Maria. You're always so compassionate. You betcha. They don't call me the Virgin Mary for nothing. I practically bleed compassion. Ah, uh, you know, that, that might be true. You could very well be the reincarnation of the Mother of God. No, no, you're, you're supposed to laugh at that. It's embarrassing if you take it seriously. Alone in the white haired girl's room, Maria was acting much more friendly and relaxed as they conversed, as opposed to her no-nonsense attitude in the hallway. The two women were, as you can see, quite close. Lesbiabs? Could it possibly lesbiabs? Could it? They had crossed over the wall, separating master from servant, and built a bond of friendship. And at some point, they had begun to speak frankly with one another when no one else was around. Maria was the only person in the mansion around whom the white-haired girl felt comfortable being open. Lesbians detected? Do, do, we, do we have votes? Are, are the votes in from chat? I imagine she was very much enjoying these moments of conversation. You wish to know who the headmaid was? My, my. Are you sure you want to ask me that, Master? <laughs> Some questions are better left unasked, for your own good. I have to say, madam, you have the prettiest fingers. Mine are all rough and dry and nasty. You think so? Mine haven't the slightest bit of muscle. They're about as frail as dead branches. Oh, who needs beefy mitts anyway? I, I still think a healthy looking hands like yours are far more attractive. Oh, my, my girlfriend with, with her strong, strong hands. <laughs> Who's that fucking nerd they were talking about? Shut up, let me finish my story. I, I, let me tell my story. God damn it. Shut up, Aster, please. Please. What? What's the like about these things? Women all over the world dream to have having hands like yours. Slender, feminine, and perfectly cared for. I don't know, just looking at them lights a fire in my loin. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> it's been really something. 
It uh, makes me want to lick every last... We, we moved past subtext. <laughs> Actually, say, can I lick them? Quick, quick turnarounds here. <laughs> I can't run on my tongue up and down all ten of those sweet little digits. We, what is over text? Like, super text? <laughs> <laughs> Ultra text. <laughs> Come on, can I? What'd you say? Uh, s stop that, Maria. Seriously. No, I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh, Maria. Oh, how did this TV leaves turn out, madam? The ones you imported. All the maids just adore it. Uh, they can't get enough of them. Right? I'd sure like to get a taste of it. She's she's even winking. If you end up with extra, you think you could spare a sip for me? Mm -hmm. Uh, that was some. Um, what was in the cups I dropped? Ah, oh, really? Well, ain't that crying shame? And Jacobo wouldn't have any of it. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, I mean, I mean, just just look at her. D doesn't she make you just just want to pick her up in like a bridal carry? And and to tease her? I mean, God, why does that man have such a stick up his ass? You went through all the trouble of making it for him, and he was busy. It's it's not his fault. Busy? You mean playing billiards, drinking bourbon, and puffing a damn cigar? It may look to us like they're just making salt us, but certain their meeting has some importance to their business. Yes, yes, uh, the, the the capitalists work hard for for their money, and it is it's not exploitation. They just they just work smarter than us. Yeah, the, if if you notice, the, there is like a difference in the white girl's calculation over time. In the first one, she, she did distinctly come with the goal of murdering them, and she had a lot of conflict internally about that, etc. There's also a complete difference in the upbringing and, uh, you know, uh, wealth, status, etc. They're not, it's not, they're, she's not like the same character each time. Like, there, there are, there's definitely like a through line here, but, but it's different each time, right? It was imprudent of me to try to step into the men's world. That's just not right. I mean, you're you're his fucking wife. Why shouldn't you be allowed into the room? It doesn't bother me. Uh, you don't have to pretend. Here's an idea. How would you like to have some of that tea now? We also have some orange marmalade, which you like so much. Add a scoop of that in a tray of cookies and we have a perfect tea time. You're singing the siren song, madam. But you really should be doing that with him. He would not have tea. I suspect he does not like it. I wanted to go to waste, so... Madam, I know it's none of my business, and I have no place at all saying this, but... It's not impossible for a woman to file for divorce these days. You don't have to sit down and take it, not one bit. You're pretty, well-educated, and so young. There's hope even if you do leave him. These are plenty of other men out there. You aren't obligated to stick with that arrogant jerk. He's just very busy right now. There you go again. There wasn't a time. There was a time when he was kind. Uh, he wasn't like this when we first met. Back then he was a little awkward, but a kind man. Him, a kind man. Yes, I believe it or not. There's indeed a time. Say, Maria, would you mind giving me a little more of your time? I'll, I'll make some tea and we can talk. All right. You were telling me about when Jackbo was decent, I'm all ears. Indeed. As I'm sure you're aware, our, our parents arranged this marriage. 
Before I immigrated to this country to be married, I, I lived in a misty island nation. Portraits of my ancestors hung in the house where I lived. I remember as a child, wincing in fear at the sight of them staring down at me. My mother and father were constantly telling me to show them respect, as it was their hard work. Hard work. That kept her bloodline alive and well. However, they were fighting an uphill battle to do the same. It would have been clear to anyone reasonably perceptive that our house was coming tumbling down. Valuable furniture and paintings slowly disappeared and eventually portraits were gone too. As our house collapsed, so too did my parents' health deteriorate, robbing us of any source of income. And though I was educated, I lacked the skills necessary to obtain work. Just as we were about to run out of money in Alphonse, my parents received Jack Bo's parents' marriage proposition. Both of our families stood to benefit from the arrangement. I had social status and he had wealth. We each had what each other lacked. One needs more money more than money to make it in the world. Without at least semi-reputable name attached to you, you're liable to get laughed at at most social gatherings. I first met Jacobo here in this country. We didn't even know what the other looked like until our wedding day. To be quite honest, I was scared to death at first. I was so nervous. What kind of man would he be? Was I to be wed to some middle-aged stranger? We were not marrying because we had fallen in love like a normal couple. I knew I was no position to be concerned with such things. But when I thought about our future, I shook with fear. But the man I saw through my veil at the wedding was remarkable. He was young, had strong, masculine eyes, and at the same time, he too appeared nervous. <laughs> he was shaking as much, now even more than me. Seeing that, the priest gave an impish little smirk when he asked Jack Bo if he bowed his internal love to me. I counted myself among the happy, and I still do, for in that moment I experienced true love. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, totally. He wanted to hear about when he was kind to me. Well, after the wedding, we were given a week to ourselves. I suppose you could call it a honeymoon, though we didn't take a trip overseas or even go very far at all. He looked at me with uncertainty and asked, Where would you like to go? I beg your pardon? That's what this week is for, right? I consider granting your request, so tell me where you want to go. Um, I am. Um, this is all so sudden. <laughs> Nothing. Well, this whole engagement was spur of the moment. Normally, we'd have planned a trip in advance, but unfortunately, our purpose has uh, served so long we act the part. You must be disappointed that you had to plan your honeymoon as it's happening. No, no. Um. Ah, what? Speak clearly. I don't like when uh, people don't speak their mind. I'm sorry, uh, uh, but I'm I'm happy, even if this is a political marriage. Oh, you're quite the positive thinker. Your parents say something to make you think that way? I am. Well, either way, if you're so glad to be in this arrangement, then hurry up and decide on a destination. Though there's a limit to how far we can go. If you want to take a trip, I'll consider it. What is something funny? It just seemed comical to me that our honeymoon has begun and we're only now deciding where we want to go. Not in a bad way, though. I'm glad our parents didn't arrange everything for us. Perhaps you heard, but I'm quite sensitive to sunlight, and not in the best of health. So it'd be rather trying for me to spend a full week out of the house. We couldn't go on a trip, but um, if it's not too much trouble. Speak up. Could you show me around town? I'm new to this country and unfamiliar with its customs. And I'm rather afraid to go wandering about on my own. Show you around. Yes. Would that be possible? Huh. On a rare bit of time off, you asked me to show you around town? Is that really the most exciting idea you have? I, I'm sorry. If um, there's something where you would like to go, I'm, I'm fine with that. I will accompany you anyway. As if I could drag someone who just professed to be sickly all over the country. My god, I've lost all interest in the trip. Yes, there there has been heavy implication of which country this is. They said New World, they're building a train track across America, and they mentioned the two railroad companies that did that. It's it's very clearly America. Like how it was very clearly uh, Spain. And how it was pretty clearly England as well. Yeah, it's it's like, they're, they're not saying the names, but it's very obvious, and it's like, Oh yeah, it was the other country was Dutch and Japan and, and part two and uh, the second door as well. 
they, they really, they're hiding it, but they really do not try to hide it. So it's, I, I wonder why, like, that's a, that's a part where I don't quite understand what the goal is there in terms of writing. Is it just like a tidbit to make the reader think and try to involve themselves in the history world and think about where it is? Like, uh, there is value in that sort of thing, right? And that's the best thing to come with. I'm wondering if there's any, like, more important reason to do so, though. Hello, what are you doing? Go get ready now. I beg your pardon? Didn't you want to see the town? You will show me around? You're the one who asked. Not like I have any other options, so yeah, I'll show you around. Thank you. Don't just stand there, you dullard. Can I move on? Oh, one, one moment. Wait for me, please. He hurriedly climbed into the carriage he had called for, a look of fr uh, frustrated displeasure on his face. And then, as he had forgotten about me until that moment, he returned and grabbed me by the arm and led me to the carriage. In retrospect, I realized he was not being very gentlemanly, but I was pleased that he was making any attempt to interact with me at all. As the carriage trotted down the streets, I saw so many new things. that I had spent most of my time cooped up inside at home, so it was like stepping entirely into a new world. And add to that the rapid industrial advancement currently taking place, I saw men shouting back and forth as they smacked newspaper articles with the backs of their hands. Yeah, it's 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 a specific type of illusion. Uh, the thought among Anna. Yep. I saw corner cafes crowded with cigar smoking men on break from work. It was like the hustle and bustle of a festival. But every festival has its underside. I also saw overworked men, looking like they were on the verge of collapse, drinking water from a spigot at the side of the road. By way of contrast, I wore fine clothing and I had a carriage at my disposal. I imagine every day was a struggle for them just to remain afloat. Had I not married the man I had, I too might have found myself in the streets in a similar situation. But it was not relief that spread through my breast at the sight of them. It was pangs of guilt. It felt to me like a life of opulence was wrong, sinful. It broke my heart to know I was living so much better than them. Jacobo snorted disapprovingly at me, seemingly reading my mind, and then said, The poor man who envies the rich covets his wealth and finds the ambition to make... No, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. This, this is why capitalism is great. The, the ambition of, of the worker. Ah, goddammit. <laughs> this, this, is, this is when he was kind. This is kind, Jacopo. This is, this is, this is peak, Jacobo. Opportunity. Ah. Uh, make himself the rich man who pities the poor, thinking his duty to giving them offerings of philanthropy. It's just, in, insert Kreia, Kreia saying, you, you take away their chance for growth by helping them. By the way, uh, just talking about Coder, like Kreia, completely whack, like, Think like the way she presents thinking about dynamics is good, but like pretty much all the arguments she uses are actually utter garbage, and she kind of sucks hella, and her moral stances are garbage. It, it is fun examining the the more like uh, the frameworks like the entire series is built on, etc. But Kotor two actually not uh, not that good in terms of what it actually presents. Done done shitting on CRPGs now. Sorry. Sorry, Culture 2 is still a pretty good game. D don't don't eviscerate me, anyone hiding in chat. Or or openly in chat. To me, the latter is far more nefarious. Excessive charity will ruin a man, make him come to expect hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um... Yeah... Kreia does focus mainly on, like, the options he presents and her goal in itself is just fundamentally flawed, you know, the killing force thing, where there's things just, uh, but it's, like, what she does present through the game is basically no matter what you choose, she's like, nah, that's wrong, question it, don't, don't, right? And that's good in terms of, uh, y you know, calling the Star Wars opinion, please. 
Uh, I, it's it's okay. I'm I'm one of the good Star Wars fans. Uh, the, uh, the Clone Wars cartoon is the only good thing of Star Wars. <laughs> All right. All right. Not not to actually do with uh, like craft and stuff that goes into making a loss and stuff. <laughs> in in my chat, uh, calling the police. I, I mm, that that's pretty sussy. Uh, what a joke. If you're going to do anything for them, you might as well encourage them to climb upward. Take <laughs> except for the Star Wars lore police. <laughs> Spur on economic growth and the flow of capital. I actually had a bunch of like uh, the EU novels as a kid. Well, I didn't have them. They're just in the library, and I just basically read everything in that library. Also, uh, by the way, uh, can can the Americans in chat just uh, just say? How how convincingly American does uh, does this uh, immigrant uh, Jacopo come off as? Like, does does he just fit the spirit of America? Doesn't he truly? Doesn't that sound like a better option? I say nothing, simply smiling and giving an ambiguous nod. He had a point. My sympathy and guilt meant nothing to people actually experiencing hardship. If feeling guilty for my own fortune act, if I'm fitting away the it struck, it would accomplish not little more than self-satisfaction. Yeah, you, you would need some sort of structural change. You seem to have seen straight through to my very core. <laughs> he reads like a gringo character written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which is very funny. Yes, he he he's almost stereo he's he's a stereotype in just how awful he is. Uh, not to say that real people aren't and cannot be awful in a way that, uh, you know, like they, there's no greater to depth to their like awfulness, and it's it's what you see is what you get. This is a man who had built his own fortune through investment, which I imagined required him to be rather astute. But doesn't a world where everyone is constantly trying to climb higher and higher sound rather exhausting? I personally would prefer to be in a position where I could watch, if only from distance, as others climbed. But obviously I could not say as much to him. Sometime later, the character came to stop in front of a shop. As I looked at the building professionally, he gestured at the door with his chin, signaling for me to get out. Lost and confused, I stepped down from the carriage, and before me spread a showcase behind a large glass window. However, lined up in the case were not precious metals or expensive clothing, but machines. At first, I had no idea what kind of devices they were. Have you never had your photo taken before? Uh, no, I've, I've had a photo painted. A portrait painted, though. Are these machines for taking photographs? A portrait, eh? Why, well, I'm not surprised. Uh, I did not mean to boast. Uh, go on, get in. Uh, please, wait, wait for me. The owner came out to greet us with a wide smile as we entered the shop. Well, if it's the strange thing I've seen all day. You bring a lady, and a real looker at that. Where on earth do you catch this pretty little thing? She's my wife. Huh. Well, well, I beg your pardon. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Just goes to show you never know where the cards may fall. You make it sound like my getting married is some kind of miracle. I always thought you wanted to choose money over love, love, sir. Oh, pardon me, this isn't appropriate to stay in front of your wife. <sighs> um, uh, do you often come to the shop? On occasion, I need some things here from time to time. I see. There you go, smirking in. What's so funny? We're going to have photo taken, yes? I'm so nervous and excited, I've never had one before. And have to have it taken side by side with you. What are you talking about? Pardon? Who said we're getting our pictures taken? And side by side, please. This is this is the kind Jacopo. You're sending shippers down my spine. But 
This is a photography shop. Hey, shopkeep. The product I contacted you about. Is it ready? Oh, yep. Sit tight. I'll be right out. Hmm? You take a seat. There's a chair over there. What? I'm going to show you something much more exciting than sitting still and waiting in front of a camera lens. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Just do as I say. Oh, okay. His need to have control over everything is nauseating. <laughs> and all of his beliefs. And the way he acts to others. And just kind of the look on his face. Just, just really everything. I sat down in front of a large mirror, which I presume was normally used to check your appearance before having your picture taken. <laughs> well, he is a Byronic hero. He, he looks the part. Well, is he a Byronic hero? Not really, but he looks the part of one. Right? He, and that is attractive in a way. Sitting before a mirror with someone else present was quite nerve-wracking. Out of embarrassment, I dropped my gaze to my knees. But when Jacobo returned, I was entranced by the curious object in his hands. It's a daguerreotype. What is this? Do you know what a persistence of vision is? The human eye does not perceive the world 100% accurately. This is especially true for objects in motion. It remembers the images for a short time, so if you put a new image in the same place, your eye perceives it as motion. Um, seeing it for yourself will be faster than explaining it. Oh, uh, okay. Good, just like that. Bring your head in close. Here goes. Standing behind me, he slid his finger across the top of the peculiar toy, causing it to spin gracefully. And then... Oh, look at this little cute little animation. Ah. Uh. So what do you see? They're dancing, and man and woman are dancing. Sounds like you're not having trouble seeing it. Are they dancing well? Yes, yes they are. It's the most adorable thing. <laughs> what adorable? That's funny, after they're modeled after a ballroom dance. Um, yes, it's it's a very elegant dance. <laughs> the anime gears for the Sakuga would kick in. <laughs> But you see, they're small, like little dwarves, which I thought was kind of cute. And they seem so close, going around and around without ever letting go of each other's hands. This is incredible. Why does it look like they're dancing? They were all lined up in a row a few moments ago. Goodness, I just explained it to you. That you it's playing a trick on your eyes. What you're seeing is a lot of different pictures in a short period of time. To put it in other words, you might understand better. It's an illusion. Your eyes are being fooled into thinking the image is moving. An illusion. But they're dancing. They really, really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion and not something else? Illusion's a, illusion's a really impor important word considering the fact that the title of the game is based on illusion. Uh, sorry about that. To me, it does not seem to be. I cannot see it as anything but two people, two tiny people dancing. That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. And you're right, that's, that's a shame. I didn't think you actually would. But it's the most precious thing. They look as though they're dancing on top of my palm. I was mesmerized by the strange phenomenon. Pictures were moving, after all. Still images had begun dancing before me. It was almost as if God had breathed life into them. He had called it an illusion, but I could not grasp that. It was such an adorable, heartwarming sight. I imagined the two were off living in some other world, separate from our own. They looked so happy. I was almost certain they were dancing off in their joyous world. Free from all the sorrow, loneliness, and pain of this one. Eventually, the speed at which they danced began to slow, as if they were resting their legs. I almost thought I could hear the sound of their feet with each step. Ah, they've stopped. 
They can dance forever if they don't get tired. I see. I'm amazed such an incredible device exists in this world. It makes me wish I'd gone outside sooner. I'm sure someone from this distinguished house of yours has seen a plenty of amazing things with the family. Hardly, I rarely ever left the house. I'm ignorant about the ways of the world. If you had not told me, I would probably never know about moving pictures. The illusion of moving pictures. Do you like it? Yes, of course. More than the portrait you had painted? Yes, yes I do. The painting was wonderful too, but... You can't seem to make up your mind. Go on, tell me which you like better. The portrait or this? Uh, um... I like this better. I see. You look somewhat pleased. Though, when it comes down to it, this is a simple trick only a child would fall for. Then I suppose that makes me a child. If it means I get to watch something as splendid as two tiny people dancing, I'll happily fall for the... I'll happily fall for the trick. Quit describing these two tiny people dancing. You're going to lose your head that far up in the clouds. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I do not know how else to describe it, though. It's a toy called a Benacasticoscope. Why did I say daguerreotype? I'm crazy. Benacasticoscope? Benacasticoscope. Benacasti... Wheel. Benacast wheel. Ah, close enough. It was invented around 30 years ago. Though we had the examples of, um, you know, using it with uh, puppets and models of way earlier in time than that. Uh, uh, was there one that could be uh, traced back to, like, uh, the Arabic, like, Golden Age? Uh, I, I, think th I think there were, at least. Had the shopkeep make one modeled after the original design. So the shop owner drew this. He did. A lot better than you expect, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I'm surprised he could draw something so cute. Say that his face and he'll go red as beat. What I'd give to hit a load of that. You could tell him. You should tell him next time you see him. <laughs> He's a sweet man. Despite how he looks, you mean? It's not right to judge people based on their appearance. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't take it too seriously. The shop here, here loves new technology. The Fanac Hestoscope is one such invention that caught his eye. You can trick the eye into thinking drawings are moving. Using a sequence of photos, you can perhaps make it seem as though real people are moving too. Oh no, he's 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 investing in the film. If it becomes possible to show these images to many people at once, the developments could broaden the options artists have to express themselves. Wait, he he likes the arts? Not drawings, but photographs? Yes, photos. By taking hundreds or perhaps thousands of photographs, it'd be possible to reproduce the world as we see it. This room, the people walking down the streets. There's no point in recording boring everyday life, though. If you're going to leave a recording method behind, it should be pro the projects and enterprises that move nations. Say, for example, a moving record of the opening ceremony of the railroad. Guess what actually exists? That would be something worth watching. And then in time, it would expand beyond a mere record-keeping technology and find its way into the hands of artists. Is such a thing possible? You must remain still for a long time to just to take a single photograph. Right now it isn't, but eventually it will be. And I'm not simply fantasizing it. Is that so? It sounds so very futuristic. Do you? What? Do you want to support people who work on that sort of thing? Is that why you're friends with the owner? It has nothing to do with my wants. I merely think there's money in it. The rich star for entertainment and the artist creep that entertainment. I have no interest in their pretentious self-expression. <laughs> ah, this dude. This, this, this fucker. Legitimately, humans, humans have making art and like ritual and all sorts of things not necessarily related to survival since the start of time. Since the actual legitimate start of time. Okay. Let's see if I can ban him. Uh, ban someone. Ah, okay. You got, you got it down. Uh, literally too slow. <clears throat> yeah, it's like we spent so much time like with the wall paintings, with art, with culture. It's it's as much as part of human existence than it perhaps even more so than survival because 
you know, we didn't have to do it and we focused so heavily on we spent so much energy, so much time, right? Like getting ahead in life isn't the core of human experience. Uh, hate this UI that I have right now or the Twitch one because I, I am going to approve this one I can, especially when I get uh, some screens that are more horizontal. The idea of art is also something that has to be amazing or good as a commodity, isn't it? It's like, it's something people did e even poorly, badly, for themselves as well. We, we also get a lot of, a lot of like, misinformation about tribal conflict and all sorts of other things, but, you know, we'll, we'll get into that some other time. I'm sure we can probably talk about tribal conflict when, when we get Siconia Phase 2 or something. Anyway, back, back to this. <laughs> What's so funny? You look like you're enjoying yourself. Honestly, it's just about the money. As you say. Alright, let's uh, get moving. Next is dinner. What, we're leaving already? Uh, does that displease you? No, no, not not at all. To tell you the truth, I want to spend a little more time playing with the Fenakis wheel, but I could not bring myself to say as much. Reluctantly, I approached the owner to return the wheel. Don't bother. Bring it with you. What? But... If you don't want it, that's fine too. Just make your decision quickly. You're making the driver way. Having said that, Jack will exit the shop. I alternate between looking at his back and the Fenakis wheel, debating what I wanted to do. And then with a smile, the owner whispered to me, you're allowed to keep it, really. Your husband out there made his gift for you. For me? A little while back, he came to my shop asking if I could make it a cast a scope. Now that I've knocked me out of my chair. He's a man who almost never asks for favors. He's pretty damn brusque and he's got a tongue sharp enough to cut steel. But he's not wicked to his core, I swear. So please, man, be a pillar of support, man. And that moment, the next will became a precious treasure to me. We had only just married days earlier, and yet he had commissioned it for me without even knowing why it looked, what, what I looked like. I was filled with warm, pleasant elation. I agree with the owner. Jacopo was not a bad man. Mm, j mm. He merely had difficulty expressing himself. That might also be true, but he might also be a bad man. <laughs> Hurrying up back to the carriage, I gave him my deepest thanks. He glanced over at me for a moment and then turned back towards the window, muttered, yeah. Oh, this this isn't the maid talking. This is uh this is the white haired girl. She was narrating. I'm sorry that you can't tell the difference because I have a negative one voice. Uh from there we went to a restaurant for dinner. You call this pizza? This crust is atrocity. It's like I'm chewing on rubber. How can you wave my country's flag and not serve spaghetti? Oh no, he's also Italian. How can this man continue to get worse? Also, yeah, we, we obviously knew what the name Jack was, but still. Do you have any shame at all? This wine is pitifully imbalanced. Far too high levels of acidity. Listen to me carefully. The house wine is the face of the restaurant. Truly, we hit rock bottom. He complained about every little thing. It was a complete disaster. He's also this guy, too. Uh. But curiously enough, I was not at all put off by his behavior. When the sun set, the carriage made its way to a nearby hill. The cool nighttime breeze felt wonderful on my skin and flushed from the alcohol, the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Though Jack had complained about the quality of the wine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly. It made him unexpectedly talkative. Look out at the city. A gloomy town that shuts down at night isn't suited to expansion or growth. But this city isn't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps. You can hear the bustle of them talking. This is a city that still has plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rising waves of the economy, many more people will gather here. More people means more money in circulation. More money in circulation means the city grows. Companies are founded, and more goods are bought, 
insult. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what's happening from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives, and the next thing they know, things are different. Now I'd wager most don't notice the changes at all. Only those with eyes sharp enough to realize what's happening can see success. I cannot afford to overlook even the most minute change. Do you have a dream of some kind? A dream? I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call the dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somehow it possibly better gave than Mel. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 that Byronic hero charm. L look at that wavy dark hair. Look at that like disdainful expression. <laughs> oh, mm. yeah, yeah. Like Jesus, when you when you lay it out and think about Mel into Yukimasa into Jacopo, that's like, what are what are the odds? Is there is there a word for just liking terrible people? Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. The world? Yes, the world. And to do that, you need neither physical strength nor kindness but money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on obtaining power? Uh, because I want to change my country, I imagine. Your country? You're aware that I, like you, am an immigrant, right? I immigrated from an island in the Mediterranean, though not from the same island as you. My country is a peculiar place where candor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country's on the poor side, and nobody does anything about that. I am one of but a few of my fellow countrymen who has set his sights on the new world. And then, and then you then you think about how much uh, gold uh, was hoarded by you know the fascist regime in uh, you know uh, Italy <laughs> back then. Uh, well, not back then, later in time, but you know you know what I mean. And it's like. Hmm. There are fallings far behind other nations. If I find success here, perhaps that will catch their intention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to class. You have much love for your homeland. My feelings are a little more complicated than your love. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I'll have to remember not to get myself drunk around a woman again. Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, quick, quick question for everyone. Uh, which, which out of the three is the least, least bad? In, or most attractive? Those are two different questions, so yeah, which, which one's the, which one's the most attractive despite how horrible they are? So, Mosca, surely, surely a monster fucker like you can't be opposed to a little murder. I I would say an investor is is also kind like a, a filthy capitalist is still a killer. It's it's just by negligence and indifference. And actually, sometimes directly when they when they call death squads or uh, force like uh, coup d'etats and yeah yeah you know you know. <laughs> Mel, Mel is definitely the least bad. Yukimasa can have some murder as a treat, Polly. Polly didn't know Yukimasa was nice as hell to Polly. Is it alright if I provide you encouragement as you try to attain your dream? I know my presence is more likely to be a hindrance, but I like to be there to watch as you trek forward. I suppose do as you wish. Thank you. 
You you have my support then. Um, d darling. <laughs> Set a shiver down my spine, though not an unpleasant one. <laughs> I'm glad to have you as my partner. I was without a doubt happy then. <laughs> well, whatever, like, if your relationship can survive the amount of torture, murder, and blackmail, that's how you know it's free real. Oh, speaking, speaking of that, like, uh, we, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting considering how Mel's parents were able to stay together despite everything that happened with, hey, the, the cheating, then exiling the, and the daughter and the whatnot. And uh, stay on relatively good terms. <laughs> also, murder is kind of hot, but that just might be because I don't want a lady to tear out tear out my throat with her with her teeth. Uh, moving forward, his smile, the things he said. The Fnax wheel he gave me, they were all undeniably real. And those memories give me the will to wait. For the day things go back to the way they were. <laughs> no, that's understandable, laudable even. Uh, thank, thank you, Mosca. Thank you for understanding. Also, speaking of relationships where they can survive some torture and murder and blackmail, you know, Beatrice and Bathler, rock solid. Rock solid. This is something that actually happened to another maid. She heard a sound in the middle of the night. A sound like dripping water. At first she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky to cover the stars. <laughs> in the story of, from Story of the Eye. Those two, those two from Story of the Eye, they, they did some fucked up stuff to that other girl. Oh boy. And I, I'm glad you also like uh, reading horrible, uh, horrible media that is painful to read about horrible people, Mosca. I honestly, I don't think anyone else who also read Eden, 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 and the mom and the priest. Also, I have no idea what compelled me to actually read all of Eden, Eden, Eden. It is actually just physically painful to just read through that, like, that flood of words. <laughs> Maybe it's a faucet, she thought, so she stepped out of her room and into the corridor. Compared to her room, it was unearthly chilly. The maid regretted not bringing something to cover herself with, but that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much colder outside her room. Her night clothes had always been more than enough for a trip to the lavatory. Wondering what the reason could be, she made her way toward the sound, but then she realized something. There were no faucets in the direction she was going. Rather, she was headed toward a hall. The mansion where she served had met in halls, but this was one in a far-off corner of the house, the least used hall of them all. It had a high roof, but not a lot of space, so it was difficult to make good use of. It also had somewhat of a heavy air to it, a very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as part of their hazing. Anyway, when the maid realized the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. But there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know? So as much as he hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. There was nobody there, and it didn't look like anything was leaking either. There was no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found. But she could still hear the sound, drip, drip, getting louder and louder. Slowly stepping further into the room, looking left, then right, then left again, she searched for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the center of the hall. She stood there still, quiet, 
and then a chilly spot on the nape of her neck. With a little yelp, she reached back to feel her neck, but it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, wearily tilted her head backward. And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling. Gah! <laughs> That's rich. Amazing. Oh my god, you scream like a little girl. Uh, Maria, you little... My god, are you men or children? This is my house, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Uh, whose word were those again? Uh, shut, shut your mouth. How do you know about that? Where are you eavesdropping? And another thing, I do not care for that stupid sort of stupid fantastical tales you women love to pass around. Uh, because they scare you. Aw, oh, you've never been able to handle things scary, Jacopo. This is a very different relationship. <sighs> oh, oh, don't glare at me like that. You're going to destroy my sides. <laughs> bodied. Utterly bodied. Look at, look at the scrollboard. So did you come here for the sole purpose of telling me that cheap try? Acting tough after the fact just makes it look twice as much of a wuss. <sighs> well, I mean, I did make a good half, of, make up a good half of it, but the mains really did hear a sound in the middle of the night, and I came from the back hall of this very mansion. Did you know they used to say it used to be a chapel? Again, I have no interest in the woman's little ghost stories. Is that so? Are you sure you're not just scared? Maria. Well, that's it. The rumors aren't completely unfounded. This is a pretty old mansion. It had a lot of work done on it. Kind of feels like it's barely holding itself together. Like a big old quilt with pieces from all different time periods. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far end. It's supposed to be there used to be stained glass in it. Before a certain, certain beast broke it. There's a depiction of an archangel, they say. Such a shame. I wonder when it was broken. If it was still there, it better be worth a fortune. I find that hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a chapel inside a mansion? You got a point, I guess. Now, how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work. But uh, the other maids can be a bit nasty, you know? Being with other women is like walking on glass. Am I to blame for that? What if I said you were? <laughs> Don't give me that look. They're just not fond of me, simple as that. Nothing you can do about it. Is that so? Oh yeah, I was talking to the madam. You just tell me you used to be quite the gentleman. Were you perhaps actually in love back then? You sure don't act like it's so easy to miss, but I guess you're not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you're younger, you're still... Do not speak of that. The past is not worth remembering. It is unnecessary. So do you the past exists just to be cast aside? I... Nah, it's not that important. You, you don't want to talk to me about it, I won't talk about it. But your wife? Never mind. I'll leave you be. I'll have to get back to work soon or I'll be staring down the headmate's arctic smile. Alright. If the fancy strikes will drop by and we can trade more ghost stories. Maria. <laughs> what, no ghost stories? No, not that. I have not forgotten those days. But no, it's... I... I'll be off then. Alright. If the fancy strikes you, drop by and we can trade something other than ghost stories. <laughs> what did I tell you? I'll consider it. Goodbye. That's a good angle. Oh, God damn it. Can't escape anything. <laughs> look at this. Look at this brouillard. Ah, oh, they've grown to be so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. The scent of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause any trouble if I picked one? <laughs> well, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite the peculiar hobby. Madam. Um, I cannot spend as much time as I would like outside during the day, so I end up coming out at night. I apologize if I startled you. 
Oh no, not at all. There's a chilling, captivating beauty to the sight of her snow-white form standing here in the moonlit garden. I would hardly... Um, what are you doing out so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the slight chance it might be a burglar, I thought it my responsibility to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the grocery servant broke into their safe. News of that spread quite far. I'm sure you would have heard about it. Oh, but Gamash uh, was in prison some time ago. Uh, dear me, cannot seem to get my head out of the past. Um, um, do you intend to give the white roses to someone? Y yes, I was thinking about giving it to my husband. While well, I expect he has a little fondness for such feminine tastes, the scent of flowers has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs a reprieve from his work. Oh, is that so? You are so very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give to you was the same shade of white. Oh, he? Uh, but when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. <laughs> just, just directly. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he'd wished. In its place, he had a decorated rose fashioned for you. Um, what exactly are you referring to? Oh dear, do you not remember? Then I'm to assume you have forgotten what happened to the rose accessory as well. He was unable to give that to you either. But that time, because you rejected the gift. I'm not criticizing you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it. Heartbroken from having lost you, he buried the rose in this garden. Over the years, the rose in this garden withered away and the places grew with thick, unsightly, nasty weeds. Many, many years later, the accessory was dug up by a beast. And curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. A beast? You do not remember him either. The foreign man who, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. I'm... I'm sorry. I have no idea what you're speaking of. The only gift I've ever received from a man is my Fnacus view. And furthermore, I have only lived in this mansion for a year. While the garden was not as thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Because I have been taking care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrived and began to work on it, however, just look around. You restored it the former glory to the magnificence of a flaxen-haired family's time. I promise I'm not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you would not remember. Though you are still you, you are different than before. Different, though not in the sense you are a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name... Again? My name is... Yes, but you should already know that. Again. More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you are waiting for? Oh. Oh, that that's a that's an interesting tidbit there. <laughs> Redacted is that Dutch? <laughs> What are you talking about? I have met you many times. I know of your past, of events that transpired long, long ago. Um, I... I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion just a year ago. Until then, I had never left my country, or even set foot outside my own house. We did not have any servants either. So where, then, are you saying we met? This mansion, of course. But I'm... I'm telling the truth. It was a year ago, shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer from a marriage. I knew something had to be done. I, I knew it, so I... so I, I'm telling the truth. If that's what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I'll suspect I know why you seem so flustered. Are there moments when your memories seem hazy? When it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks? You needn't fret. One day, eventually, you shall remember all. One day. Oh, 
what the hell is this? A white rose? Did she leave this here? A flower. What does she think she's doing? Is she trying to aggravate me? That garden. That damn rose garden is the whole problem. Flowers serve no purpose to, but to deceive. The garden is a sign of weakness. It has no place in this house. Approximately a week had passed since then. The white-haired girl was, as usual, spending her time in her room, reading staying inside the house. Then Maria barged in. Madam, madam. Oh my, you're out of breath? What happened? What happened is we have a big problem. The garden, the, the rose garden. The garden? All the roses you put so much love and care into growing are being chopped down. We lose them if we don't hurry. Like, fucking come on, man. Upon hearing the news, the white hair girl dashed from her room and towards the garden, with Maria followed closely behind. When she arrived, she saw a dozen or so sweaty, rugged men at work, Jacopo shouting orders. The men had clearly no concept of how much a single flower was worth, no concern whatever for their beauty. For they mercilessly thoughtlessly hacked away at the shrubs like they were not but weeds. It's, it's a living, it's a job, you know, it's a, you got, yeah. Each flower they had torn from the earth, exchanged another one of the many lies the white-haired girl had put so much time and effort into tending for. Jacobo, what are you- Oh, hello, Maria. I didn't expect you would come with her. Uh, why would you- Do- Why, why, it goes with the saying. This house has no need for a garden. Damn flowers have no place. Might as well do something worthwhile with the soil. A miniature railroad would be- what is the point of a fucking miniature railroad? And certainly a great deal of on the eyes. Um, like just purely on aesthetics level. Uh, am I am I right in that this is just this is a super whack take? I could even get my hands on some genuine wheels. The same wheels being used by a revolutionary transcontinental railroad. Ten or twenty years down the line, they'll be worth a fortune. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I'm looking forward to, 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 to your take, Moshka. Putting in a miniature railroad in your house like it's an open air mall. Nah, nah, nah. You know how much this garden meant to me, don't you? Did it honestly have no place here? Flowers are calming effect on people, they give, they give you peace. They're not by any means worthless. So you're saying that white roast was your passive aggressive way of telling me to calm down? No, not at all. I simply thought you. At the end of the day, you're just using it for your own purposes to trick and deceive. To you, this rose garden was nothing but. Uh, Jacobo! You've gone too far. This isn't right. Huh, gone too far? This is my mansion. What do I have. To, what do I do with my property is my business. Okay, miniature railroad going around flowers is actually pretty cute, but. <laughs> but it's also really dumb. With that rose arch out of the picture, we'll have a much better view. There won't be anything blocking the sun any longer. We're just supposed to be sensitive to sunlight. Spend too much time out here and you'll be liable to fall ill. Get back inside now, you too, Maria. The poor thing, though she did not say a word, was surely thinking. Are you truly that determined to rob me in my sanctuary? <laughs> the flowers might give you peace of eye. Manipulative temptress. Foul slattern. Beguiler of men. Ah, uh, this guy sucks so, so much. <laughs> just, just a bunch of disparate like aesthetics and ideas just all plopped into a garden like it's almost a wonderland. Yeah, yeah. The words twirled out around her head, unable to make the final journey to her lips. She stood there, looking down at her own feet as her own husband marched off, and listened to the screams of the roses being reaped. A slattern's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for praising, uh, praising my derogatory instincts. <laughs> Power more gotta give you passive. 
massive blows to the dude's rock, right? Okay, okay, you say this, but, but, uh, big, big spoiler, big spoiler. Uh, while, while, while this game is full of dudes that suck ass, this is also the game with probably my, uh, probably the dude that rocks the most. A dude that, that, utter, a dude who's an utter banger of a human being. <laughs> I will neither comment or not comment on it, but you know you'll you'll find out, and and, uh, and Michelle will do some things that that'll make you understand pretty quickly uh, on what I think on you know on their character, but yeah, he's 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 for later. We'll get to Michelle later. He he's there, and then we'll yeah yeah. Also, uh, yeah, spoiler, this, this game's long, we have a lot to go. The garden reverted to a state of ruined desolation. A shame, after all that work that went to restoring it to the beauty it had under the flaxen haired family. And as Jacobot said, in this place worked scraps, went scraps of metal, train wheels, prototype models, carbon rods. These items may have had value for him, but I certainly do not think it was worth robbing his wife of a place that made her feel comfortable, just so he could store them there. Besides, I was rather fond of the Rose Garden myself. The Rose seemed to invoke a sense of nostalgia in me. I felt as though somewhere far beyond the edge of my memories, I'd seen another Garden of Roses, modest though it may have been. Before her memories? Huh. But I can't remember when it was. Does that come as a surprise to you? I am quite sure there are periods of the mansion's history of which I am not aware. But in any case, Jackwood caused many people great pain in order to repurpose that garden for himself. And then he continued to walk all over his wife. Whenever she tried to do something kind for him, he would brush her off saying, That's not your place. He paid no mind whatsoever to the looks of dejection that rose to her face each time he rejected her. As he began to wonder if anything she had said about the man he had been a year earlier was actually true. And if it was true, could a person really go through such a drastic change of heart in such a short time? What do you think, Master? I... No, I have spoken enough about me already. I seem to be talking a lot about myself this time. But that is hardly appropriate behavior for a maid. Now let us return to her tale. That evening, the white-haired girl sat in her room, staring sorrowfully at her fanacus wheel. A small mirror before her, she tried spinning the paper disc. But it was just not the same as before. Her husband was not there at her side, and even more critically, there was not a smile on her face. And then she had heard a faint knock on her door. Who is it? It's me, madam. It's me. Uh, may I come in? Oh, Maria. Uh, of course you can come in. What are you doing here at this time of night? Uh, I was just wondering how, how you're doing. Uh, should I let you, uh, should I let you alone? It's no trouble at all. I'm always glad to have you. You're making me blush, madam. I got the feeling you were a little down in the dumps. So I'm not here because I need to be. I just kinda ended up here, I guess. Maria. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. I, I can be a bit of a busybody, you know? Trouble with boundaries, I guess. Never been able to fix that. No, no, I don't I don't consider you intrusive at all. I cannot count how many times your bright smile and cheerful energy have shone a light on me when things were dark. If I didn't have you, I would have given up already. You seem to see right through me. Even now, you're exactly right. I'm feeling a little dispirited. The garden was an even bigger life raft than I thought. Perhaps I'm being overly dramatic, but the roses were almost like children to me. I get it, I do. You put your heart and soul into tending that garden. It's obvious how much you love them. Of course it's gonna hurt watching a bunch of men stomp all over your flowers when you cared for them like your own children. Now I know, I said this once already, but you don't need to force yourself to put up with him, really. You don't have to bend as well just because you're a woman. You can survive without him. Anytime you want to walk away, that's your choice. I mean, I'd sure be lonely if you left now. But your happiness is more important than any of that. So, you know... Thank you, Marie. I truly do appreciate it. But I, I would still like to wait for the day I can still see his warm smile once more. 
if you say so. In any case, I guess I'll just have to be there to back you up. It'll be alright. You leave everything to this holy version. I have a stupid grin on my face no matter how down. You really are a reincarnation of my god, aren't you? Oh, you, I told you. It's just a joke. Oh, whatever. So, hey, madam. How about a dance? Make it, making the moves. A dance? At this time of night? Yeah, but since it's late, no loud music. All you get is a little whistling courtesy of me. But, but this room is too small. For well, I'll just use the great hall. Wouldn't that put us in everyone else's way? He'd probably complain about the noise, too. No need to worry. Jack was out inspecting the factory or something today. After that, he's got a meeting. So he'll be staying out the night elsewhere. The rest of the maids are in the room chatting away. No one will notice. Where I come from, we dance all the time. We take, eat, drink, and be married to her. No food or drink for us, but we absolutely can dance. Making the moves in the wrong order, but making them. <laughs> Dancing is a great way to forget all of your cares. I'm not much of a dancer. No big deal, nobody's watching. Come on, put a little fancy perfume and let's have some fun. I don't have any perfume, though. Didn't think so. You got all the right ingredients, madam, but you don't try to make anything special, honey. You got so much potential, but not even a decent sized wardrobe. At the very least, you should wear some perfume, which is why, ta-da, I brought some with me. The maids are in love with the stuff. It's a big hit with all, women all over the country. The base is vanilla. It's got several other fragrances mixed in. Give it a try. It smells divine. But Marie, I... Come on, what's the harm? Just a little splash on your wrist, like so. What do you think? Ah, you're right. It smells wonderful. Doesn't it? So you like it? Yes, very, very much so. Excellent. Now off we go to the Great Hall. Are we really going to dance? You bet your butt we are. It's not healthy to hold up in your room all day. I know you can't handle a lot of sunlight, but you still gotta have some fun and move your body. Come on, let's go. Oh, Maria. Though she looked out for the uncertain as Maria led her forward. Hand around her wrist, the white haired girl seemed to be enjoying herself on the inside. Having spent her life without a single friend, she never dreamed the days would come when she would find herself being dragged through the empty halls of a dark mansion by another woman. Maria's presence seemed to shine a light upon a quiet corridor. It would have been a very lonely trick without her. Maria spun around, gave an impish smirk, and raised her pointer finger to her lips with a soft, shh. The sight of it caused the white-haired girl to chuckle quietly. <laughs> the two of them on their way to the secret private ball were like two adolescent girls. In short order, they arrived at the great hall. My heart was pounding all the way here. What's there to be nervous about? It's not like you're breaking any rules. Only kids get in trouble for staying up late. Once you've grown up, you're responsible for yourself. You too await the day where you're dragged by a wrist to a dark mansion by another woman to, 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 to have fun dancing around like a bunch of idiots. The truly, truly the greatest. <laughs> I will say though, it seems rather odd for two women to dance together. Oh, if you're having a good time, what does it matter what's between your legs? Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Where I come from, there's dancing for families, lock arms, and big rings that go round in circles. So who says two girls can't have some fun together? I imagine you had many good moments with your family. Well, I don't have a family anymore. What? Alright, so I'll, I'll show you how it's done. Watch carefully, because you're up next. Oh, uh, okay. Well, with a wide grin on her face, Maria began to whistle softly and prancing across the floor with an energetic rhythm. It was not the kind of complicated dance you'd see at fancy parties. The motions were simple, flowing, unembellished. A folk dance, I suppose you might call it. She seemed to be improvising a little bit as well. But in any event, the way her girl was captivated, despite it being a sequence of steps anyone could replicate, Maria breathed life into the dance. She was neither as light as an acrobat, nor as light on speed as a professional dancer. She was her own lively, beautiful self. Maria twirled in place, the skirt of her mane uniform bulging gently up around her. With a smile, she extended her hand towards the white haired girl. She hesitated for a moment, but as if being pulled forward by some invisible force, she took Maria's hand. Hand in hand, Maria ushered the white haired girl into her dance. It was just the two of them, but she could almost see the crowd forming around them. In the other word, in, to the other people stepping up to join in. That's it, madam. You're doing great. Now lift your leg up good and spin like so. This is not easy, Maria. I'm having trouble following along. You can do it. You're looking good so far. 
You're natural, madam. Oh, Maria, I won't fall for your flattery. I mean it. The whisper of two girls, the muffled laughing. Step, hop, step, step. The rustling of fabric. Many different soft sounds layered on top of one another, creating a little bubble of happiness in the center of the hall. By the way, I just love how this uh, like narrates into imagery. And, like it's it's so nice. Uh, the the way her girls' movements were a great deal clumsier than Maria's, but Maria would never disparage her for that. On the contrary, she showered her with praise. As flustered as the white haired girls appeared, I imagine she was quite pleased. But before long, the tightness in her face must have loosened. A smile spread across her lips, and she began to brighten up. See what it'd tell you, fun, huh? Yes, I'm quite surprised, both that I can dance and I'm enjoying it so much. Glad to hear it. They exchanged the looks and both laughed. That might have been the first time I had ever seen the white haired girl so delighted. However, because of the infirmity, she quickly found herself out of breath. Her porcelain skin flushed red. Maria immediately stopped for a break. She could surely have continued dancing for some time, but Maria was conscientious of the white girl's physical condition. She looked over to Maria regretfully. Uh, there's, there's some smart things you can you can do to get around that, but yeah. It's, it's also like the sheer breadth of information and little touches and atmosphere and everything, right? And like internal monologue and the narration is explicitly characters who have their own views and are sharing it constantly, right? It, it has a similar problem to Minika in that regard where it's just like the, it, it is too dense to properly adapt in. And it has, it lies to you too much too. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, you're, you're fair there. My apologies, if only I had more stamina. Most of Godic like literature also just generally kind of like falls apart <laughs> in like any other format. Cause you know, playing with literature itself kind of like makes that really hard for you. My apologies, if only I had more stamina. I'm hardly a suitable partner for you, Maria. Sure you are. This is all to cheer you up, madam. So as long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. And heck, I'm enjoying myself, buddy dude. What do you think? Wouldn't it be nice to do this again sometime? Whatever you're feeling down, let's dance. If you... If you really do enjoy dancing with a fellow girl like me, then I would be glad to. Isn't having a little more co Have a little more confidence in yourself, madam. You're so pretty and kind-hearted. I have loads of fun when I'm with you. So you don't need to be so hard on yourself, got it? Thank you. The pleasure is mine. This is an absolute honor to have a rare opportunity to see a bright smile on your face now. <laughs> my apologies for keeping you out so late. I should get back to my room. Oh, I didn't even realize what time it was. I'm more than up for a little more gunplay. You have improved my mood most inadequately. I would not want you to be tired for work tomorrow. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well then, let's get out of here. Yes, let's. Smiles on both of their faces, they made their exit the great hall. However, right, before they reached the door, it swung open. A man's towering shadow cast the two women into darkness, his cold, bitter glare affixed on them. If I had even the faintest premonition this might happen, I would have done anything in my power to stop the two Uchiri girls on their way to the hall. But I am internally powerless. What are you doing? Standing before them in the doorway was the master of the house, Jacopo. Ah... Uh, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? No, what would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. What? What is that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? And I have to say, you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath. Red as beet. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? No, oh, I wasn't going. Ch Jacobo, calm down, seriously. You shut it, and now you're taking this tramp side. I've told you before you are not to leave this house without first consulting me. Or do you mean to tell me you've forgotten? God, your ears aren't just for show, alright? They're better than that. They'll even throw out the parts you don't want to hear. 
No, I swear I wasn't doing anything. Silence, I have no interest in your excuses. You're always watching in the shadows, observing. Try not to step on anyone's toes. In the back of your mind, you're mocking me. No, I... Listen up and listen good. You try stepping out of line again. You just try disgracing me again. You will not get away with it. For the love of God. Get back to your room now. You too, Marie. What the hell is this guy going on about? Oh, Alright. Oh, what is this sickening sweet smell? How utterly infuriating. It'll take forever to get this off me. It's all as though you at least had some sense of taste. Why did he have to disparage her so? What did she do so wrong? What did she do to deserve that? She did nothing whatever so ever wrong. She deserved none of the ridicule he showered her with. However, she was not a strong-willed woman. She did not have the courage to retort to the man yelling at her. And neither did Maria, it seemed. Without another word, they both scrambled out the great hall away from Jacobo. The white-haired girl was painfully a miserable sight to behold. The cheer drained from her spirit and the rosy hue from her now pale cheeks. She was hunched forward slightly, looking like a small, scared animal. Say, uh... I'm sorry, this is all my fault. If I hadn't asked you to dance. And me bringing the perfume only made it worse. No, you need not feel bad about anything, Maria. Everything you did was with my best interest at heart. So don't worry. I will be fine. Uh, um, so, madam, I'll clear everything up. I'm really am to blame. He wouldn't even give you the time of day if you tried. He's a stubborn little shit when he's mad. I'll talk to him. He's more likely to listen to me. I'll make sure he knows he was jumping to conclusions, that I'm the one who dragged you out there to dance, and also that I forced you to wear the perfume. I'll clear everything up, okay? So please, you cheer up. It'd be best if I could tell him myself. But yes, you're right. He wouldn't... Uh, he wouldn't likely listen to me. He rarely ever listens to me. I should be ashamed. I cannot even hold a simple conversation with my own husband. These things happen, you know. It's not easy being married in a lot of ways. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, like, I, I, I told you straight away that he sucks so hard. Like, it's, it's like in every conceivable way too, right? I apologize for having to do something so unpleasant, but I would appreciate that. Oh, no, no, no problem. I'm happy to. No need to apologize. I, I've i got this. I'll dunk his head in cold water until he's not blowing steam from his ears anymore. I'll cool him down, promise. And you never know. Maybe he'll, he'll be open to listen. You could be back to the way you were a year ago in no time. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it, madam. Be positive. You look so much better with a smile on your face. All right. Thank you. I doubt Jacobo would listen, even coming from Maria. And I imagine the white-haired girl felt much the same way. However, she grabbed onto that sl sliver of hope. She let herself dream. She let herself believe, and even just faintly, that everything would, could, would go well. Such is human nature. You grasp at whatever hope you can find to keep yourself afloat. That night she did not sleep. She was afraid that even in her dreams, Jacobo would be shouting at her. She felt as though her memories of a year prior were beginning to crumble away. So my, t my tooth is swelling again, and, uh, you know, I've, I've got the operation to take out all four of the impacted teeth. Uh, later uh, this Friday but uh, yeah so I might call it early today just to avoid hurting my jaw even more uh, also don't don't worry about this this is still a distraction from pain uh, yeah and uh, I, I might be on tomorrow as well we'll we'll see maybe I can just do another like hey fun small stream uh, thanks so much everyone for uh, joining me here uh, maybe we can just talk for a bit about the thing and then maybe I'll see who I can rage I feel like uh, that's a good way to go about things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Monster. Don't worry about it. it. It's gonna be painful and awful, and then it'll be over.
All right. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll drop into Red Muffler Man. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, let's first just uh, see what's happening. So yeah, we we've started the second uh, the third uh, door now in the story, right? Uh, how how'd you feel about the characters so far? Any any interesting thoughts you uh, you guys would like to talk about? <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the Fadas and Morganas are pretty good. Also, this music still two hundred percent of all. <laughs> it's wild how completely unsympathetic the Jack was. Even asshole Rip Kit Bell is. Yeah. He's a dumbass. He has problems, but he's he's a he's a human being who, at core, probably pretty decent. Uh, Yuki Masa even ha at least has an internal struggle of some kind. Jackbo's are just like the worst capitalist, uh, horrible nationalism, horrible racism, uh, just a huge utter jerk to everyone. He's abusive to his wife. He's. Uh, he yeah, it, it's kind of crazy how much more hateable Jacko is than a literal horrible murderer, Yukimasa. White white hair girl de definitely needs uh, definitely needs a uh, better taste in men. Her taste in women, pretty good so far though. Maria, hmm, yeah. Yeah, even him being, even her example of him being kind is him at best being a cinder, but kind of just actually being a jerk still. Fuck, he just starts like complaining about the food and service he's getting on their dinner, just constantly berating people. He's like, yeah, yeah, just more meat on the binder. Just, you know, just kill those people. There, there's more, there are more blacks and yellows in his, like, red words. It's like, like, fuck. <laughs> That's it, really, basically, it's not as well as genetic. <laughs> okay, we're, we're just, we're just, we're just throwing, we're just throwing the Italians under the bus for food. All right, all right. Yeah, so uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some redeeming stuff. For Do we want redeeming stuff, for Jack? Bo? Do you want to even try to acknowledge the idea that you know any part of this asshole is worthwhile? Also, what if, what if, what if there just is no redeeming part? But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, things we also notice is like. There's a lot the maid doesn't know about and uh, about the situation itself and her own perspective, right? And even way back when, so there, there's definitely something really deeper going, uh, deeper going on, like uh, in how everything is just connected. And so yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to looking into that. And it's like it's clear like the game isn't like, hey, Jackapo, Jackapo's right. Which is the least appreciable, like, but yeah, I, I definitely would not like it if it was like, no, but Jackpo, Jackpo, Jackpo's good. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna raid Red Muffler Man and uh, getting ready for that. Uh, he's playing Strive and he's uh, he's recently switched to uh, like trying to start streaming full time, so you know, uh, probably good idea to show him some support. Uh, thanks everyone, and um, I'm going to be looking at some other things. I'll uh, start streaming and some other collabs and stuff uh, for after uh, my teeth are uh, horribly pulled out and I am also no longer dying. So thanks everyone for uh, joining me, and really, really thank you so much. Uh, see you guys all later. Have a good night.